Nitro World Games, yeah. baby! Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back to Nitro World Games 2019, coming to you from the Utah Motorsports Campus. I am Todd Richards, and we are back. And we got a couple more events here to go, but we've been knocking them out all day long, and I am joined here in the booth. Well, Bill goes back. He we can. brought Bill goes back after uh, FMX, and we also brought in special guest, Bucky Lassick. Hello, Bucky. Welcome, Hi, what's up, TR? Welcome to the host set. Uh, Bilko, you just ca you got done with FMX. Uh, talk to me about it. What was, what was it like? It was an intense contest. The wind came out. I mean, I was a little bit sore as Bucky's giving me a little shoulder massage. So um, for me, it was all about a little bit of survival. I got MRI scans booked this week. So I did all right. I got fifth. A couple of guys went down. But fortunately, no injuries. Uh, Sheeny Senate, double backflip rule up. Unfortunately, second. Bowden won. It was it was an intense contest. Lots of lots of cool tricks went down. So and then the quarter pipe. Right. Man, those guys close to 50 feet, which is insane. 50 feet on top of the ramp that's already 40 foot tall. It's like falling out of a, an airplane. I think it's the equivalent of like eight story building. So yeah, props to Corey Creed, the Aussie guy taking the win, Australia. <laughs> insane, Bucky. Now you're out here. Last year you joined me up here in the host set, but apparently yeah. you didn't do a very good job, so they booted you. Yeah, they but, booted uh, me. Now, now I'm just a spectator. Yeah, but you're over here. You're you're messing around. You're kind of in the mix over here. You're over there driving some uh, some rally cars. Sierra cars. All right. So yeah, what you've seen so far. I know you. You know you want to be on this track just as much as you know Bilko and everyone else that's got uh, yeah. a motorsport obsession. What what have you been liking so far out here? My favorite has been Big Air, 46 feet. Was that, for, did they break 40? It was almost 47, right? Yeah, it was almost 47, yeah. yep. That is insane. I mean, you jump a quarter pipe freaking, on a skateboard. Like, my, my heart is in my lung, my, my heart is in my throat, watching how they check up and get a still tabletop up top. Yeah, it's insane. All right, well, let's take a look at some highlights from today. We all started off here with the short track event, and, uh, you know, we're gonna end it off with short track as well, but there's been there's been so much stuff overall. Like it's there's kind of something for everybody here. There is. And I mean, you know, you when you were driving in this morning, you saw that line of cars. There is a ton of people here to spectate. Yeah, it's awesome to see the amount of people that have come out. So props to the, the people from Salt Lake and all the fans that have come out. I was at the gas station earlier filling up and there was two two cars that didn't even know each other, just started talking about the rally and how pumped they were to come out and watch it. So yeah, props to Salt Lake City for putting on this awesome event and all the people that have come out and watched it. And I'm just as excited as they are to see the show and see these rally cars fly. Well, yep, so we started off with short track and then we moved into the rally portion, Nitro Rallycross. Bucky, you know, you've, you've competed in rallycross before. Yeah. What is it like looking at this course compared to the courses that when you were competing? It's killing me. The jealousy. You know what's killing me? The Subarus are killing it right now. <laughs> it's like a totally different car than when I was in it, that's for sure. Yeah. But yeah, the track looks amazing. Travis did an amazing job. The bank turns, there's like three or four jumps. Yeah. Yeah, I'm backing it. There's definitely something it's, for everybody out here. It's hard um, being over here. Yeah. It's not cool. No. It's not but cool. But you're, you're over there, you're whipping around the dirt. You've got something going getting on. Getting by. Let's go steal some keys. You and me, kick some people out, just there's jump. A, there's an extra Subaru available. There you go. <laughs> I'll be I'll be right back. There's plenty of stuff for everyone. You guys, you guys can go over there, steal the keys. There's go karts here. There's something for everyone out here at the Utah Motorsports Campus. But you know, more importantly, let's talk about some of these matchups out here. I mean, Ken Block this morning. Yeah. Uh, basically, hasn't been in a car like a, a rally car, a rally cross car in almost a year. Long time. Yeah, and he's driving an older car. Yeah, I think the Fiesta's a little bit better than the, what they had last year for, for this style so. of track, but 
As you said, Ken being Ken, so much ability, he's, he's jumped right in well, and he's Specifically he's on what pace. I want to talk about is him hitting the jump with three tires. Ain't care. Ain't care. <laughs> yeah. Ain't care. No, he was looking for some Instagram moments for yeah. later on. We know how it goes. I think he pulled into the to, to the hot pits and he had him tick he had him DB to all the tires and he went out again on all four flats. <laughs> that's that's later. Well, so then we roll right into FMX and you said the wind kind of came up a little bit. It was there. okay. It was manageable. I mean, it was a lot worse last year, but I mean, you can never predict that. They moved the quarter pipe this year 90 degrees the other way and uh, the wind was still a factor for those guys and the height they're getting I mean, granted, they're not taking hands and feet off, which is the, the biggest thing when you when the wind is coming in. Right. Yeah, as soon as you let go of those bars doing a flip, the front wheel tends to get a mind of its own. But yeah, luckily it was pretty, it was steady enough this year. I wouldn't say it was perfect, it was steady enough. Well, speaking of Ken Block, we're gonna send down to Lorette Nickel, who is with Ken, who's about to get going here in the Nitro Rallycross Final. Guys, thank you so much. Ken Block started to get suited and booted up, ready for this Nitro Rallycross race. Ken, back row inside. What are your concerns? Uh, my concerns is uh, trying to get to the front, uh, you know, and punctures. I've had three races ruined by punctures this weekend, so three out of four. So I'm glad to be finding the final, and I, I've put in the quickest laps of the event so far. So. If I could just somehow get some clean air and, and get on these guys, hopefully I can I can get to the front. But we'll see, it's not, it's gonna be a challenge. I have four cars directly ahead of me and one to the side of me, and these are some of the best drivers in the world, so it's gonna be a challenge. Yeah. Of course you have a plan coming into this race, but as soon as you start this car, does everything change? Nope, I got a plan. There's only so many options I got. Okay. You know, some of that plan could change depending on what these guys do in the first corner, but. Yeah, the plan is really try and get as far forward as I can in the first couple corners and then hammer down. So I've got my setup dialed, I've got exactly what I need to do on the on the track dialed, and it's just a matter of putting it all together. Okay, now tell me about the joker lap and how you think that's going to affect everyone. Uh, well, not only the joker lap, but we have to do the tabletop under the big jump also for one lap in this final. So, you know, all that plays into strategy. When you, when you attack those things, do you save them for the end? You know, and yeah, it's gonna make it more interesting than ever. So I'm really stoked to okay. see how that plays out. We have plans, but everything could change in the first corner. <laughs> well, we are so excited to get into the main event. A lot of moving, a lot of excitement, guys. Cannot wait, back to you. Thank you, Lorette. Well, you know, we're about to get underway here. These guys are staging right now. We're about to get them out into the grid. And, uh, you know, what, do we have any predictions? I'm going to go with you, Boca. I'm going to say, well, like, the Europeans, they get a lot of rain and cold weather, but you see they're the only two with the, uh, the, the foil sunshades on right now. So they've come prepared for this. I mean, they, uh, Timmy Hansen was on pace last year, took the win. He was. But you know what? It's, it's Travis's event, and he drove extremely well earlier, and I think it's time that Travis he came out swinging. Travis is pretty sneaky, huh, Buck? You know what? It's going to be a battle on turn one between... Sandell and Hanson, I can guarantee that. No one's going to want to give up P1 Look who's behind one. them, TP and the other Hanson. So I predict TP to be in a good situation. All right. Well, there you have it. Those are the predictions coming into the Nitro Rally Cross Final. Guys, I'm going to let you guys go. Everyone's watching over here. It's super easy to steal keys right now. So yeah. get over there into the paddocks, steal a car. There'll be an extra car on the grid in the next two minutes. Uh, Watch. Right, well, thanks for hanging. Next up, Nitro Rally Cross. It's coming to you right now. From its inception, Nitro World Games exploded onto the action sports landscape, changing the contest world as we knew it. Last year, Nitro World Games expanded with more locations, more events, more athletes, and some of the most epic moments in action sports history. Highlighted by the debut of Nitro Rallycross. This year, that expansion continues and the contest will be the most competitive we have ever seen. From FMX Best Trick, to Moto Quarter Pipe, to Flat Track Racing, to Nitro Rallycross. It will be like nothing we've witnessed before. And now, this is the moment we have all been waiting for, the Nitro Rallycross Finals, live from the Utah Motorsports Campus. Welcome everyone here to the Utah Motorsports Campus, just outside Toele, Utah. 
Nitro World Games, and more importantly, Nitro Rally Cross. I'm Tess Sewell alongside Andrew Coley in the booth. The incredibly hardworking Lorette Nickel is down on the ground getting all of the info from our drivers. Andrew, it's been it's been an insane couple of days to start with, but what a grid we've ended up with for this finals. Do you know what? Anyone who would have made it, if for any of the 10 who entered this, I said before the competition started, th this is super close. It's way closer than last year. We haven't seen the dominance in either of the series which these drivers come from, you know, World RX and ARX. It's super close. We knew that, but my goodness me, we've got six incredible drivers in the final, and how good to have Ken Block and Travis Pastrana as well. And here it is, that championship race with Patrick Sandell and Kevin Hansen on the front row, but more, I think amazingly, we've got guys racing ARX and WRX all season long, but Travis Pastrana and Ken Block, they're not, they're just weekenders. And that's the thing, you know, it's a one-off. You, know, you mentioned earlier on, Ken is 51 compared to Kevin Hansen being 21, and Ken won't thank me for saying that. He, you know, <laughs> he's a weapon, he loves this car, he's done a brilliant job to make it through the final, as has Travis. And this is how we got here, this is the chaos that we've had from the last couple of days of racing. This was the, the Challenger A race this morning. So basically, whoever won this race went straight to the final. Remember, Sandell and Kevin Hansen went straight to the final yesterday. So this morning, it was a straight fight. You get P1, you go row two. Yeah, it, it was great, it was close. Uh, unfortunately, you can see there the remains of Ken Block's tire. He unbelievably, he took the huge gap jump with just three tires on the car. This was Challenger B, bit of contact at the start. A bit of split strategy we saw as well, didn't we, Tess? And, and a number of people on the pace. Look how close this was. This and was Atco spinning crazy, around. crazy, yeah. Atco going backwards. We saw flames coming out of the car. But more importantly, Travis Pastrana pumping his fist because he made it through. And then the O'Reilly LCQ. I love this race. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Five cars. Of course, we've got six coming up next. So this will be the first time we've had all those cars on track. Tanner Faust up front on an absolute mission, but Ken Block had jokered early, and look at this, he comes in super, super quick over that jump, edges Tanner Faust, takes the checker flag, so Block and Faust put their slots in that LCQ, and here they are now, warming themselves up, ready to get down to the grid and, uh, and send it into turn one. Speaking of sending it, you watch Patrick Sendell yeah. there just trying to get those tires warm. Patrick Sendell, remember? Sendell, yeah. Sendell, Patrick Sendell. We've watched him over the past <laughs> few days really send that car, and he's just, he had a terrible time in 2018. He's having a great time this year. And this final, six cars, they do six laps, but this is where it gets interesting because after turn two, you've got three choices. You have, so they have to do the joker lap once and they have to do the tabletop once. They're not actually required to take the big gap jump, but we know they will unless they have a technical issue because that's the fastest line. So the joker, obviously, that, that's pretty standard for rallycross. The tabletop is, is kind of a, think you could think of it as another joker if you like. It's, it, we, it's between 0.7 and two seconds a lap slower. And I think, Tess, what's gonna be key here is what happens in turn one. You heard Ken Block say it, and we've got a bunch of plans, but it depends what happens in front of us. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk you through it, you know, as, as we get down there, certainly once, once we see things pan out. But I am expecting definitely to see at least two people go tabletop on lap one. As we said earlier, there's carnage in that first corner when there's a bunch of cars. You want to capitalize on that and do the slower lap when uh, the other guys are having a squabble out in the first corner. It's been an amazing day so far, and our Ripley's replay, replay moment of the day so far, well, I think it's got to be this. So down towards uh, the first corner, this was Tanner Faust trying to make his way through the gap, but he couldn't. Pastrana look up the inside of Arpin, trying to find a way through over that little hop jump. And there, you see there, we saw two guys go for the low tabletop on the first lap. This was just a brilliant race from start to finish, Test, particularly this first lap. And this was really that battle that cut Pastrana through, and you can see nose to tail racing, all four cars just squeezing through at the end of that first lap. And there you can see Pastrana made the same pass on Arpin that he made on Block yesterday, a fantastic Block pass up the inside into that head and it's a long, fast gravel braking zone. And so we know there's an overtaking opportunity on the track. We know there's a bunch of taxis going to come into play at turn one. This is going to be fantastic. There is Ken Block on the back row. You heard him say it. They've got plans. They're in a position at least test to see now, what unfolds in front look, of them. Look at this picture. You can see that except for the middle of the grid, everybody's spaced out because they're actually on diagonals. You can't really tell it there, but the reason you, can, you can see the see. front of all the cars is because of the way they're set. So here it is. Kevin Hansen and Patrick Sandell there on the front row. 
Timmy Hansen, Kevin's older brother, and Travis Pastrana on the second row. And then you got Block and Faust at the back. But check this out as well. Look, Sandel on the pole has Pastrana as his rear gunner. Kevin on the outside has Timmy as his rear gunner. Now, these guys are in it to win it. This isn't a championship. This is a one-off championship race with a big prize fund. And more than that, the kudos of winning Nitro Rallycross. So they're all going to want to win this. So they're going to go all in in turn one test. They've been sensible in turn one. I'm not expecting this to be sensible. And there's the mad scientist of this event, Travis Pastrana. He came up with the idea for this track, the massive bank turns, the huge 100-foot gap in the middle, the triple crossover. You're going to see all of that in this race. And best of all, the crazy designer that brought is here. He <laughs> is just a madman. And let's find out what he was planning to bring us this year. Hey guys, my name is Travis Pastrana. I'm from Annapolis, Maryland, and I'm an action sports personality. He did have to take a brief intermission after that last run because he chipped his tooth. With Nitro World Games, we always try to be the big air of action sports with any discipline. Rallycross is going to be no different. Big jumps, bank corners, pretty much everything that I love from all different forms of off-road and car and truck racing combined to one high-intensity, big air platform. It's going to be like hell track for the cars. They run side by side jump here, maybe over the big hit. Both the Subarus, amazing. <laughs> I believe this sport can really take over auto racing and the next generation of what action sports wants. Just put on an awesome show and the crowd's going to know what we're doing. Well, I think the crowd does know what they're doing, especially the fact that after last year and how great this event was, how insane the crowd is this year. They're just packed in here. They were lined down the roads all the way to the freeway. And it was, I, it was an hour queue to get in oh, this amazing. morning. Yeah, but but being paid it's worth it. Oh, it's community. totally worth it. That best trick competition in FMX. Was, uh, it is insane. The quarter pipe is just something I can't imagine. Oh. It'd be like, uh, you know, uh, oh, wild. And there it is, Patrick Sendell having the best weekend ever compared to the worst weekend ever at this time last year. He's got the front row and that inside track to try and make the choice on the three-way split at turn two. And this is critical. This race, I think right off that turn two in this first lap is going to be all about strategy. It, massively. So we, we know they're going to lose a little bit of time in, in, the, uh, in the tabletop area there. So we're going to see split strategy uh, in the rundown. There's Travis Pastrana. Lorette Nichols got an update on him now. Well, thank you so much, guys. We see Travis Pastrana on the second line. Now, I talked to him a couple of days ago, and he said he wasn't sleeping prior to this event, about two days prior to this event, he was not sleeping because he was so nervous about this event specifically. He said once he came into practice and he saw all of the cars making the jumps, making the track and in one piece, he said he got a good night's sleep and he is so excited because this he feels is the future of Rallycross in America. And for this man, that is a heavy burden to carry, but he's so excited to be in the main event and he is just looking forward to doing battle with these incredible athletes. Guys. Thanks, Lorette. And Travis is the madman who built this thing. So let's take a look at our course preview with Travis Pastrana. Here we go, Nitro Rallycross 2019, taking off down the first straight. Well over 100 miles an hour. Uh, we added a little bit of pavement, so it actually makes it so the outside and the inside should be equal as you go through the first turn. Hopefully the last car is there. Uh, this is the jump line coming around the outside. Gets pretty tight through here, nice and slick. Make sure you hit your apex good. And to the right there is the joker. To the left is an option that you can hit. We try to stay side by side over the jump, or at least allow someone else to go beside you. So if someone comes up short, doesn't end in catastrophe. Big, big bull turn to the right. And then as you see, coming over this single, a lot of G-forces, feels like a roller coaster in there. Actually feels like a jump. Jump out of that corner, big jump over here. Trying to land and get stopped as fast as possible. Trying to get to that apex on the inside is gonna be very, very difficult in the race. I think there's gonna be a lot of passing and a lot of bumping going on there. Super gravelly and rocky through here. It's gonna be interesting how that pans out. And then big old handbrake, slide this, trying to get as far to the inside as you can. Big old off camber. And then this jump throws the car completely sideways, jumping wide open through the gravel, missing the outside, and hopefully coming in first place, Nitro Rallycross. 
just fantastic. And thinking about your racing career, Andrew, wouldn't you love to race this? I'd like to do uh, one lap test. One just lap. one yeah. lap. I'd say I'd love to. Yeah, anyway, here we go. Getting ready for racing. You're seeing Sandel and Kevin Hansen. That's the yellow and blue Peugeot on the front line. And we're ready for the lights to come on. When they go green, we will be racing Nitro Rallycross. My heart is pounding. I know these guys will be two tests. It is the pressure is ramping up now. There'll be no blinking. Just looking up at that gantry. Wait for the lights to start coming on. Then that's it. It's adrenaline time. There's the flag from. Uh, okay, is that a yellow, yellow flag? flag? Yeah. What? Oh. Something going on here. Is a yellow flag being shown at the flag stand? That's just this. This is for the drivers. The absolutely the last thing they want to say. I, my heart's pounding. You know, you reach it. This is where this is reaching the crescendo of the event. This is what it's all about. They just want to go now. You know, they just want to get released and sent down. Well, we don't know what that was for. We haven't heard anything from race control, but it looks like we saw a hold. So they're holding them on the lights. You can see the lights came on, but they're going to go with another 30 second warning for the drivers. So there was a problem there with the start lights, I'm guessing. And we're going to get a 30 and then a 10 again. So t I say test. Honestly, the adrenaline will be flowing so much now. <laughs> now it doesn't kind of dip, you go again. It's like a double dose. You just don't need it. This, this might make turn one even more interesting. Oh, man. So again, showing the 30, it will flip around to 10 seconds. And then they'll be ready for the lights to come on. So the sequence of lights, all the reds light up one at a time. Yeah, reds go out and then we wait for the green and we're off. It's a random gap between the reds and the green, so the drivers can't predict it. Here we go. Send time. This is it, folks. Nitro Rallycross from Nitro World Games here in Utah. Lights are red. We're waiting for the green. Boom, here we go. Oh, Hansen's got left behind on the line. Timmy Hansen's got absolutely backwards. Maybe got a problem. Kevin Hansen got around Sandell into turn one. Up the inside, that's Ken Block managed to get. Ken Block's going on the tight line. Ken, Timmy Hansen's gone up the inside of Ken. We've got three cars that's gone with the low table top of that one. Sideways into the Timmy's door. Tanner Faust is in the mix there as well. So I think it's Timmy, Tanner and Ken have gone low. Ken up the inside of Tanner. Wow, look at that tabletop and Ken. Absolutely collected the water barriers there going in, but look at this. He's back up the inside of Cab, Timmy in the background, and now Tanner's gone through as well. So Timmy Hansen has gone P6, P3, P6 test in four corners. And we're talking about the guys in the back. Meanwhile, Kevin Hansen, Travis Pastrana, Patrick Sandell are top three. This is definitely not disappointing. I knew those guys would go for the inside lines. Because to, they're going to lose time. They have to go over that tabletop on the first uh, one of the laps. We knew they would lose a bit of time, but they will have calculated the others were losing time with contact. And actually, Tess, I think these three guys will have lost more time with the battling they had from turn two all the way through to the banking off on the tabletop. So still an insanely close race as we come across the line after the very first lap. And you see now how exciting this thing is. Let's see who chooses to go where. Oh! So Travis has uh, gone down to the low tabletop. So Travis is taking his tabletop left now, and that's a great shout because the guys behind were held up with that battling. So look for Pastrana on the merge. Block's coming over the big jump now. And in the background, Timmy Hansen's gone Joker. So did Block get through? Yeah, Block got Pastrana. So Pastrana didn't manage to get past Ken. Oh, Pastrana slowed a little coming through that corner. He did not get past Ken, but... We now have four of the six that have taken that tabletop route, and Timmy has taken the Joker. He was in the back, so really it was the smartest move to make. He got a dreadful start. There was something wrong with that car or something wrong with his settings when he left the line. It just didn't work out. The minute it's, it's two sweets up front, Kevin Hansen and Patrick Sandell, a bit of damage to the front of Ken's car. That shows you how hard they were trying in that first lap. So remember. Oh, foul sideways, nearly oh. in the wall test off, that, off the tabletop jump. Into the first corner, Ken Block. Around where's he going to go this time? He goes for the deep line. Pastrana's going with him. Ke Timmy, uh, sorry, Kevin Hansen heading up for the big jump, and Patrick Sandell going with him. So these are the two we need to kind of look at the gap for. Look, Kevin Hansen, Patrick Sandell have got 4.8 over Ken Block, so they've got enough time to take the Joker. But neither of those two guys have taken the tabletop yet. Test. There's a penalty for that. Faust Joker. Faust is in the Joker. So now we've got two out of the six that have already jokered. And here's Travis working on Ken Block again. We've seen him pass Ken in the most bizarre of places. 
So Kevin Hansen with a little gap of 1.5 over Sandell. Sandell looks to me like he's closed that down a little bit, Tess, on this last lap. So let's see what it is. Look at Sandell scrambling for grip over that crest. Flies the Subaru. I think the gap's come down, but I might be wrong. I think Ken is holding up Travis, because Travis is just trying to... Oh, Ken's got a puncture. Front right tyres off the rim. Sorry, Tess, just saw it as he flew up over that jump. So here we go. Travis is going to get past him. And you saw that was all shredded up from earlier contact anyway. So that's a disaster for Ken Block. He's going to keep going, but he is out of contention in this race. Timmy Hansen going for the jump again, and Patrick Sandell breaks for the joker. So Sandell's gone joker. He did bring the gap down over Kevin by three tenths of a second. So Sandell had closed down a little bit on Kevin Hansen. He's decided to go joker. I wonder if that's to cover off someone behind him. But yeah, no, you see Pastrana's behind him, and Pastrana has the joker, so okay, this is gonna be Sandell versus Kevin Hansen, I think. But of course, they've got the tabletop still to do tests. And we're not sure how much the tabletop costs. The teams are telling us between 0.7 and two seconds. Ken Block, if he denied, oh, he's gonna be gutted. So Ken Block, still Ken Block with the front right tire off the rim. Kevin Hansen just cases the jump on the way down. Here comes Sandell. So Kevin now with a significant gap. Kevin Hansen hasn't jokered or done the tabletop. tabletop. Yeah, so he still has time to lose. Back to Sandell, there's five seconds, so that's actually a pretty big margin, but he's probably gonna lose five to seven seconds. Kevin's gone tabletop, Tess. Here goes Kevin over the tabletop. Okay, let's see where he comes out. Who flies over him? Should be Patrick Sandell that we're looking for. Sand wow. Yeah, Sandell's jokered, remember, but hasn't, I think, hasn't taken the tabletop. Kevin's taken the tabletop, but Watch hasn't Patrick jokered. Sandell gonna come in there, so we see the margin. Now we know that Timmy Hansen, uh, sorry, Kevin Hansen, has to go and take that joker, which is gonna cost him about four seconds. So what we're looking at now is when they come across the line, watch the margin, Hansen to Sandell. Indeed, there you can see left-hand side is green. Who hasn't taken the joker? So Pastrana hasn't, and uh, Kevin Hansen out front hasn't. Kevin Hansen has just put in a super tidy lap test. He's running the car out wide. Yeah, the gap was 5.1, but we're waiting to see what it is now and whether or not Kevin goes joker, so. He has to, this, this is it. He has to take Last this Yokohama joker right now because he has to take it in this race. It's it's a rule, so... It's well, deep in turn one, so Kevin Hansen going to split right now. On the inside, Patrick Sandell's going to the tabletop. So both these guys now, they're taking the alternate lines. This could be for the win. Kevin Hansen dips into the joker. Watch for Patrick Sandell coming, over. coming up over the tabletop. You're looking for the merge on the exit. Oh, wow, this is going to be close. Oh, and Hansen got him. Kevin Hansen with a great lap. It was a super tight lap before Travis Pastrana in the background has taken the joker lap. So I think it's Pastrana is in the third place now. We've got, I think everybody now has taken both the tabletop and the Yokohama joker. So now it's just a battle right now. We know you can pass on this turn. It's now or never for Sandell. He maybe have a look up the inside. Kevin Hansen goes defensive. Sandell's going to go over under. Sandell going to try and undercut it on the exit. Oh, it's going to be so close. Oh, no. Just not enough space. I don't think it'll work. Kevin Hansen is going to win your 2019 Nitro Rally Cross, and I think with this altitude, Andrew, we are going to need some oxygen. That's another Hansen name on the trophy. Timmy Hansen won it last year. Kevin Hansen wins it this year. So, fantastic performance by the brothers. And Kevin will be absolutely over the moon. He was so excited to come here and do the big jump. He's come here and taken the big trophy test. Uh, and we're looking at the results here, and I actually, I thought it was Travis, but it may have actually been the other Peugeot of Timmy Hansen in third. We're going to have to check this. So I saw the Red Bull logo, thought it might have been Travis. Yeah. But could this be right? Both Hansons on the podium. On the podium. It's all the Swedish. It's, yeah, it's all Swedish podium. podium, yeah. Sandell is happy with P2. It would be disappointed oh, yeah. not to have taken the win. I'm looking forward to seeing a restart, a, a replay of the start test as well, because Kevin got the whole shot, and basically from there, you know, he, he, he won from the from the start. You know, it was lights to flag, and they tried. It was their tactics were completely different. You know, they they went to the joker on a different lap, they went to the tabletop on a different lap. Brilliant. Oh man. And you look at this. Obviously, we haven't got the officials from race control, but Patrick Sandell. What a fantastic weekend he had. Great guy. I love spending time with that guy. He's so much fun. But Kevin Hansen, 21-year-old Swede, comes in here. Youngest driver in the field. And beats his brother. That's probably the biggest thing for him. Oh, there, there's Timmy on the roof of Kevin's car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these two guys, they, they get on so well. It's a real, it is a proper family team. Mum and dad are here as well. 
active in the team. They're not just here, they are active. Yeah, they're team principal, you know, team owner, team boss. There are some of the handsome guys down in the background. Graham Rodemark there on the right-hand side, walking in with a big grin on his face. That's Kevin Spotter. He was so nervous. I went and watched him when he was doing the big jump for the first time. Graham was like, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. They're just going to be elated. It makes it all worthwhile, Tess. This, these guys are in the fight for the World Championship title. They came here, they risked the cars two weeks ahead of the next round, and that's the result. Look at that celebration from the Hansen team. Man, well, we got the final results here, and it is Timmy Hansen that managed to take that third spot. So an all-Swedish podium here at Nitro Rallycross. And we said it was going to be an exciting race. And it was oh, great. Oh, boy, did that one deliver. <laughs> it was great. T Timmy Hansen, only a couple of seconds off the back of them after that terrible start. It's a shame he didn't get a better start, because that could have been a three-way epic battle, but half a second between Sandell and, and Kevin Hansen. Incredible. And the Hansen brothers are down there, and I believe, Lorette, you're going to catch up with Kevin. You guys, unbelievable, the celebration going on between the two Hansons. And Kevin is just taking a breath, and I can feel the adrenaline just pumping through your body right now. My goodness. Kevin Hansen talking to his team, getting the whole breakdown of everything. Congratulations on your win, Nitro World Games Rallycross. That was unbelievable. Can you verbalize the pressure that you were under when Patrick Sandell was on your back tires that last corner? That was the best six lap of my life. I pushed so hard and I'm completely dead now. But luckily we have wings today. Didn't drive a lap before the start here. And I sent a mega start and the sixth best lap of my life. Well, thank you guys for coming out. This is the best win of my career. Kevin, so exciting. You qualified right into the main event. So what were your thoughts watching everything going on uh, during qualifying today? Yeah, as I said, I didn't do any lap today. And I checked out Timmy going from the, from the challengers and I knew we had a great car. We just needed to squeeze everything out. So. I did. I still have 200 in my heartbeat, so I'm completely exhausted. That is unbelievable. I mean, talk about the passion, the dedication that this win represents, not only for you, but for the team as well. We are the smallest team in, in Rallycross, and, and I couldn't have done it without my family and this amazing crew. We're only 12, but you know, all the partners we have, Red Bull, Papyrus Converse, Total, and the family, you know, absolutely amazing. All right, guys, he is taking in the moment. His team down here celebrating with him. So happy, unbelievable for Kevin Hansen. Guys, back to you. There's Susan Hansen with her boys. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, they are a small team test. 12 personnel, that, that's a tiny team, you know? It, it really is, but what, what gets me is this guy's 21 years old, as fit as can be, and you can see what it takes out of you just to do six laps on one of these cars. It's super hot, it's super physical. I mean, look at the, look at the action through There's the first Ken's lap. damage. That was what really did the, the cut of the tire to Ken Block's Ford. Ken was up the inside of Tanner, look, into the banking. This was the leaders going over the top with the guys who take look the Look at this shot. It, ah! Amazing, amazing. We still well, you can't see that anywhere no, else. No, look at that. So that was the pass look. So that was Ken getting past Tanner. Ken, I think, then had a look at Timmy Diddy at the next corner. There was, there was so much going on, Tess, we could barely keep up. And I'll be honest, that's how I like it. I absolutely, look at that. There's five cars in the air at the same time, jumping over each other. What a great show. Uh, I mean, there's no disappointment here, but look at Ken, that front. Uh, I mean, there's no tire. That was when I spotted rim. the puncture. It was pretty obvious, wasn't yeah, it, really? That yeah. close to the camera. If I hadn't spotted that, I'd need firing. But I mean, it, he'd had that for a little while, Tess, because that was right off the rim. This was Kevin and Sandell so close. I really thought here that potentially Kevin had gone too deep, but he just held on. And the power of that car managed to pull him back over this little hopper. And this is it. This is the joker lap we were talking about. You saw Patrick Sandell go over the tabletop, and this was where Patrick needed to try and get past, and he couldn't quite make it. Now, I have to say, really enjoyed it. You know, it, what, it was, yeah, we had the yeah, Yokohama Joker and the tabletop. You know, it brought out some brilliant tactics that the guys had to do one of each. So I've really enjoyed that. What a fantastic final. Uh, Kevin Hansen takes first, Patrick Sandell second, Timmy Hansen third. And as we said, all Swedish podium here in Utah today. That's what a champion looks like, folks. And he's got 
a long, long career ahead of him. He leads the World Rallycross Championship at the minute by five points. He's in a titanic battle for that title, and this Nitro Rallycross win is going to give him a huge boost in that fight. And there you have it. In our championship race, Kevin Hansen, Patrick Sendell, Timmy Hansen, then Tanner Faust, who I have to say worked really hard with that Beetle this weekend. Travis Pastrana gets fifth, and Ken Block, of course, with that damage. Uh, I, honestly, I think Ken still had a fantastic weekend. I think he has. I think it's great to see Ken back on form in Rallycross, enjoying the driving. He loves that Fiesta. Yeah, it's an older chassis, but it, he said it fits like a glove. Pastrana as well, to see Travis make it through to the final. He was nervous yesterday when he didn't make it directly. Yeah, oh, am I going to be able to do it tomorrow? He's here, but better than that, he's put on this incredible show for Rallycross fans all over the world. And, uh, you know, w what a guy, what a track. And at the end of the day, when, when Travis gets out of that car and he cools down and he, he looks at a replay of this today and sees shots like the, the one we were just looking at, of all these cars in the air, it will be the biggest payoff, maybe even better than him being on the podium today. I'm totally kidding, because Travis always wants to be on the podium. And then Patrick Sendell, like we said, 2018, terrible, terrible time at this event. But he came in, he qualified first. He had that, you know, that basically that position on the front row that was really, really well earned. And this year he's in second, and he looks like he won this thing. Yeah, he, he, he will be stoked with a second place, definitely. Of course he wanted to win. Everybody wants to win this one. Yeah, it's, it's a very special event. Uh, but I think what Patrick and also what uh, Travis alluded to earlier this weekend was this is the only time that all these championships come together. It's the only time you can measure the, the guys from ARX against the guys of ARX. And it's the only time you can get a guy like Pastrana and Block to come and race because they don't race anymore. No, Travis was yeah. so, so stoked to be on the same pace as the world's best rallycross drivers. And I think Patrick will be pleased with that too. So there you see the Hanson team getting Kevin ready to accept his first place trophy. And that's his uh, brother, Timmy, walking along with him. So a little bit of case down there. And that chaos is, uh, is raining. Everybody is excited down on that grid still. And we're just trying to hand out the hardware. Timmy and Kevin have a little discussion there about how things went. I mean, Timmy's already won this once, hasn't he? And he, yeah. will, he will be gutted. But these, honestly, the two brothers, you know, they get on so well. If anyone was going to win it that wasn't Timmy, he'll have been pleased it was Kevin. Yeah, and we totally need to find out what happened to him. We'll have to talk to him later. But Patrick Sandell is down there with Lorette Nichols. She finally caught up with him. Oh, now she has all of them. Have all of them. There is again a lot of movement down here. Patrick Sandell is talking to Kevin right now. Kevin Hansen, our winner, Tanner Faust is down here. Timmy Hansen is down here, our winner from last year. Again, a lot of movement, a lot of congratulations. Patrick, if I can grab you for just a second, Tanner Faust saying hello. Hi. Hi. Man, you put your heart on the line. You gave it everything. I did. I was flat out from the, from the first second, and I just tried to hit my mark. The one small mistake in uh, turn one, uh, lap three, I think, went a little bit wide. I don't think I lost too much time. So really, the win I lost off the line, uh, the distance we have between the cars going into the first corner ball side when we crossed the finish line. So it was super, super tight. Um, I guess in a few days I will be happy with this one, uh, but right now I'm a little bit bummed. Um, the only positive thing is that I don't have to pay for dinner. That's on the Hansen brothers, so that's the only positive. Well, I think that's a real positive, and I think you should be really po proud of yourself as well. The effort that you put in was tenacious. The passion just shows. And um, you know what? What an unbelievable day for you, and I think you will be happy with it. Now, this track, how did it hold up for you guys? It was awesome. Like in the final, it was not too dusty. Uh, some small holes, but you know, we're racing on a dirt track and uh, my Subaru is just spot on, so it can hit any hole, no problem. So I'm so grateful for Subaru to give me this car that fit perfect for this track and also can fly like an airplane. So that's awesome. So good. And now Travis took a lot of input from you drivers about how to build this track. Do you have any thoughts for next year? I want to go higher and bigger, so hopefully we can do that. Okay, all right. Well, congratulations. Second place finish. Patrick Sandell. Guys. <laughs>
higher, and, and he's going to have to put wings on. We'll just stick, we just end dreaming. Let's end dreaming quarter pipe instead, shall we? If Patrick said there wants to go higher, there's a quarter pipe right behind us. He can never go on there. Uh, look at this racing test. There's Epic. the flight you're talking about, right? The flight over the top, the flight over the tabletop, and then you're looking straight down the throat of that Yokohama Joker, which really. That was the moment. It was when Kevin Hansen had come through that Joker, and you saw Patrick Sendell just try to edge it, and he couldn't make it. Yeah, just just brilliant action. That low shot there, seeing the four cars come over one by one, and then Timmy coming through the Joker. Yeah, I think this this triple section in the middle. We didn't get what I wanted, which was one of each. Do you remember? I wanted to see the three cars stacked up. I think we managed two. We managed over, under, and under over, but not the three together. I love the track this year, Tess. The step up at the back, the hairpins, the the overtaking opportunity that Travis explored did so many times fantastic and here we go the award ceremony finally and I, I think these guys have just got to be incredibly satisfied with the way this whole thing went especially the Hansons and their team the, the Hansons you know they're going to have been under the spotlight of uh, their title sponsor Rebel here this oh, weekend okay. and, and it's this is a this is a great result for them in front of a big crowd at a blue ribbon Everybody event you know this is a, this is a fantastic result for the Hansons Timmy takes third Patrick Sandell on the left there taking second and what is Kevin Hansen run off or I'm not sure there is Kevin That's your winner Nitro Rally Cross the top of the podium for young 21 year old Kevin Hansen comes out and Jump around that playing in the background. Long. I think there needs some, to be some jumping around Jimmy tonight, Hansen, Tess. Patrick We've got to have a big party for this, haven't we? Kevin Hansen, the 2019 Nitro World Games gold medalist. Yeah, what a great day of racing. There it is, the all Sweden podium. And that's good. I think it, it's good if you're Swedish. It's good if you're Swedish. <laughs> I was just saying, the Swedish, I can't help feeling the sorry for royal family. Will probably like host them for dinner now or something. Faust, Block, and Pastrana are hopefully heading over to Sweden next year to try and get revenge at the Swedish Round of the World Championship. You know, but I mean, a brilliant performance by all three of these drivers. But I think particularly by Kevin and Patrick. You know, they they qualified straight through to the final. They get P1 and P2. So the champagne is flying here at Utah Motorsports Campus. Nitro Rally Cross 2019 in the books, and we still have more going on here as part of this Nitro World Games. It's been just an, uh, an awesome week here, and so much work going on. But there you have it. Kevin Hansen comes into Utah, and he takes it. His first Nitro Rally Cross win at Nitro World Games. What a stunning weekend of racing. It all came down to this, the final. And Kevin Hansen managed to get the whole shot over Patrick Sandell. Sandell said himself that gap that he got to turn one was the same gap at the flag, despite test all those different routes they took through the course of the final. So you saw the chaos, you saw the carnage, but you also saw the amazing fun that this track gave. Hats off to Travis Pastrana for bringing us what he hoped we would see. And man, what an awesome race. For Andrew Coley and Lorette Nickel, I'm Tess Sewell. Thanks for watching Nitro Rallycross and Nitro World Games. We look forward to seeing you next year.